So when Casey told me we was going to have Joe on, I was expecting a couple of hard tags and the bears. And, but we got a whole new Joe on. So everybody going to get to know who this Joe is and who I am and who he is and who they is. Okay. We talking NFL week 13. Lucky number week 13. The lucky one. Well, right? Let's go. It's Joe Davis, JD. And I'm just not big in the wrestling biz. I love me some NFL. So let's talk some football. And uh, Casey, what are you drinking over there? Oh, God. Casey, you muted juice. Anyway. Anyway, uh, I, honestly, Joe, I couldn't have said it better myself. We'll be right back with the picks. Let's do it. Welcome in to the Instant Classic Wrestling Podcast, the only podcast that is always, I mean always, he means always, they mean always, you mean always, she means always, an Instant Classic. Danny Hi, Hey, <laughs> We will see you on the flippity dippity. Oh, yeah. All right, what's going on, good people? Back at it once again. On the Instant Classic Wrestling Podcast of oh, football sometimes. Talking to you about this time, week 13 of the NFL. We got new people here. Basically, we just replace people with Justin. And we just replace Justin with other people because he never shows up. So, you know, use you know, so that's that's usually how we do it. But uh obviously DJ Casey Adam is here as well, the uh, faceless one. And we also got Mr. J D. Joe, introduce yourself so people know who you is, who you be, what you represent, what kind of turkey you eating on, all that, all that. I am JD Joe Davis. I am professional wrestling manager extraordinaire, commentator extraordinaire throughout the entire Northeast for Team JD and Sins throughout every promotion you can think of, but avid sports fan and my man Casey invited me tonight to check out what you guys are doing. NFL picks, wrestling talk. I'm all game, ready, excited. So let's get to it. Let me tell you this, JD. Let me just let me just break it down for you. And for anybody who ain't never watched the show before, this is the greatest wrestling podcast there ever was, ever will be, ever has been, will ever be in every day of life. Okay. Um, secondly. This is the best weekly picks you'll ever be on in your life. Unless you start your own, then I'll be like, okay, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. It's pretty good. Okay. Uh, but nonetheless, okay, real quick, just because I think everybody knows our uh, affiliations. And I feel like you may be an Auras uh, fan over there, given the hat. Not sure. Can't. Who? What's what's your football affiliation here? What do you think that is? The That's the real. Team. Washington Redskins. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not afraid to hurt feelings. There is no Washington football team. They are still the Redskins, HTTR, all day, every day. The football team is far better than the Redskins, though. Let's just be honest. (laughs) I mean, it's a way better name. It's a way better name. They're the only football team that matters, as Casey would say. I'm just saying. Uh, well, last I knew, the, the Redskins had three Super Bowls. Washington football team doesn't have any, so. Okay, I'll give you I, I, You know, I'll throw you that one. I'll throw it to you. How you feeling about the, how you feeling about Washington so far this season? How you, I mean, you got uh, Heineke. I don't know how to feel about him. I, I love his passion, but I don't know how to feel about him, right? You got some, you got talent. You got Terry McLaurin. You got. Gibson, you got this supposedly great defense, or at least the talent to be a great defense. What do you feel about Washington? This year? So our defense has struggled this year. The past year or two, they've been great. This year, I don't know what's going on. We got Scary Terry, just as you said. Tyler Heineke has been great. The here's the problem: is the past four or five years, Washington has done the same thing. We'll lose really early in the season. We'll have a great run at the end and be able to make the playoffs because the rest of our division is crap. This year, Dallas is actually decent, so I don't know how well that's actually going to play out. Um, 
I do feel that we got a solid unit. The problem is I was so confident because all we needed was decent offense because we had a great defense. And then this year, like where the hell is our defense? Our secondary just disappeared. So I'm hopeful for the future this year. Uh, if, if we end up 500, I'll be happy. I'll tell you this, JD, you, you, you'll be a good little special guest to on the warpath over there. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of on the warpath. That's, that's a good, good friend. I have. So, yeah. You should, uh, you, you, you should, uh, you should reach out to him. I'm sure he'll have you on for, for, for something. Cause that, I mean, uh, that, that's my boy, that's my boy, Corey. And, uh, I mean, he, he he has a lot of fun over there. I think you guys would have some good banter. Um, but yeah, I mean, speaking of the uh, NFC East, my overall fi- oh, <laughs> my overall feelings um, on the NFC East is actually some criticism that the AFC North is getting. Somebody in some thread of football knowledge claims that the AFC North is the equivalent to the NFC East of last year, even though everybody in the NFC East last year finished sub 500, right? Like, I mean, I get it. Everybody is so surprised by teams losing these games, right? Like teams losing these games to bad teams, to bad teams, to, to these poverty franchises, whatever you want to call them. But it's supposed to be any given Sunday, right? That That's how I'm, I, this is the one year that I've seen it actually be any given Sunday. And I love it personally. You never know when the friggin' Jets going to pull one out. You never know when the Jaguar is going to come through for you, right? You never know when the Dolphins going to just beat you behind on Thursday night football in front of the whole world. Oh, that was just me. You never know, right? Like you just never know what's going to happen. And I freaking love it. I freaking love it. You never know when the fiend's gonna get the wins, as Casey would say. Casey, you like you got something to say. What what is it? What is it? I can feel it. I can't I can't hold it in. I can't hold it in. DJ, your boy, Daniel. What what is it with him and throwing passes to defensive linemen? I <laughs> I've been holding it in all week. I need to know, like, was that in the playbook? Was that in the playbook? Like, what? Because he threw it right to him. Ain't nobody <laughs> around at all. He threw it right to him. And it was a good pass right to him. He caught I, it. But... I think it was, you know, you know, Daniel's a giver. You know, Daniel's a giver. He, he likes to give the ball away at every chance that he possibly can. Um, whether it's fumbling the ball, it's more so fumbling the ball. But interceptions too, right? Uh, he's just a giver. He, you know, it's the season of giving, right? Right? You know, it's the season of giving. He just giving a little early. It's the wrong kind of giving. He he giving he giving a division away early, right? He giving away the football a little early. Um, he might be giving away his starting job a little early, but he giving he giving. He, you know, that's that's how I, that's how I can explain it. Yes. Okay. You know, and I love Danny. I do love Daddy Dimes, but and uh, in truth be known, Joe, you'll realize something. His infatuation with Daniel Jones, his infatuation with Drew Locke, is staggering. It's it's a actually problem. I'll be I'll be Drew Locke was one. I, my friend was like Drew Locke ain't that bad, and I was like, well, okay, Drew Locke ain't that bad. So I've kind of just went with it since then. Daniel, well, who who was who who gave you that bad advice? <laughs> That was that was Eddie. Every time he comes on and anybody says anything bad about Drew Locke, he'll be like, "Drew Locke ain't that bad." Okay, <laughs> well, uh, okay, okay. Well, whenever he comes on, please notify me because I'm going to <laughs> eviscerate. <sighs> um, but yeah, uh, let's, let's let's slide back to week twelve, right? Is it week twelve? It's only week twelve. I thought it was week thirteen. Dang, I'm no, moving too fast. No, 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 no. Moving, it's it's twelve. Too, it's twelve. It's week twelve. Well, um, y'all, anybody got any glaring uh, thoughts about week twelve? Week twelve. The, week this 12. is the third straight week in a row that the NFL is drunk. That's all I will say. The NFL is drunk and needs to go home. Well, <laughs> think about how bad and disappointing the Bills are. They were my Super Bowl pick in the AFC. 
Like, what happened? They're six and four. I get that, but like, what the hell? I'll be honest. I I never thought I I like the Bills and I want to believe in the Bills, but there's something about the Bills that I never could trust. Same thing with the Titans. Okay, I don't like the Titans at all. I honestly kind of. I was just gonna say, I'm like, just say you don't like the Titans. No, no, you are completely, you are completely validated in said matter. Yes, I don't like the Titans. They're disrespectful to my boys. But anyway, I also felt like the Derrick Henry injury has to catch up eventually. You can't lose literally your MVP. Should have been the MVP last year. Gonna say it until I can't say it anymore. Should have been the MVP last year. You're gonna lose your MVP and play the same. That's not how that works. Well, and then they go and sign Adrian Peterson, who they I think they just waived again today. Mm-hmm. They didn't even use him. Mm-hmm. Like what's yeah. what's the point? I I feel like all day would have had some a game or two at least right. to help them out. And I think he just had his best game. Like he just had his best game as a um, Titan. I don't. Maybe I'm missing it. I don't know. I I don't understand. I mean, coming from the land of running back injuries, where literally our coaches won't run the uh, top average rusher, I don't understand. I, I obviously I don't get running the football at this point. Uh, so, but yeah, it's. Um, I mean, is Cole Beasley playing this week, or did he get uh, <laughs> did he get cleared, then put back on, and then cleared again, and then? <laughs> It was literally inside inside baseball. Inside baseball. I I wonder if um I, I wonder if Antonio Brown's gonna ever gonna gonna play after he gets healthy because he'll probably get suspended for faking a COVID card because <laughs> that was a good idea. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Although he, I think he was supposed to come back. But what is what is the status? So. All right, I got a question for all of you. So at the beginning of the year, I can admit my two picks, NFC Cardinals, AFC Bills. And I am seriously changing all of that right now. Are your preseason picks the same as if you were to pick today? Mm. And don't lie, be honest. I honestly think that, That's think something... that mine have changed. I don't, sorry, Adam. I, I I feel like mine have changed, but go, go ahead, Adam, real quick. It's okay. I'm used to it. Cause... It's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I was just going to say was, like, we, we we didn't even do, it like, a season preview in terms of, like, like in, 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 through every every category, you know, your, your AFC representative, NFC representative, defensive player of the year, you know, you know blah, 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 blah. Really, the only thing that I have that I was could say personally that I was for certain on was was the Bucks, and I yeah. really the, to me just the the AFC is so wide open, and even right now that remains the case. I mean, again, three weeks ago the the Bengals were the number one overall seed. Then after that, it was the Titans, and the Browns you know blew out the Bengals, and then you know the Titans took over, and then they got freaking boat raced by the Texans. But, and, and I was going to say, too, that's another thing I, I think that is the more glaring point is that, to me, there's no true elite team. Because, obviously, the, the Bucks have been, I'm, and I'm not saying that's going to be a trend, but they, they got exposed a little bit. The Cardinals have, have been exposed a little bit because they it really highlights how bad, or I, I don't, I don't want to say bad, but inept they are without Tyler. Um, but like, like nobody, nobody is like taking taking the brass ring and running away with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I could well, I, go ahead. Well, and, and also, like we were saying before, the NFL is literally drunk this season. Like, it is so it is so hard for us just on a week to week basis to pick games that last year or the year before would be so easy to pick because like we're seeing, you know, blowouts from teams that we would have never thought would blow out another team. We're seeing like, it, it's, it's all over the place. And, and two, it seems like just when you think you have a, 
clear front runner, like like you said, like y'all said before, either somebody gets upset or there's just an injury barrage or already has been or whatever, um, or a big time injury that takes somebody out. So then now you're like back to square one almost. I you know, we didn't like we said, we didn't do a preseason like picks type show where we picked the Super Bowl contender, but like even when I'm looking at them, like I, I literally feel like I can, even if I would have picked picked anyone, I still would have felt like it's a toss up on both ends. I think the AFC is a toss up, uh, and I think that's been obvious. Some of that's injury injury wise. Some of that's teams uh, kind of coming of age a little bit. Some of that seems like you know growing and maturing. But I think at the same time, even the NFC can Kyler even stay healthy long enough to make that to put that team in the playoffs? Then when he comes back uh, and he starts playing bad like he usually does in the back half of the season. Are they going to choke away the playoffs again like they did last year, regardless of all the talent they have? That's another thing I'm thinking of. The Packers, I mean, you can lean into the Packers, but then you're like, the NFC Championship game is just where they get. That's that's about as far as they're going to go. As great as Aaron Rodgers is from a talent perspective, that's that's what they do. They're, they're the NFC Championship uh, contenders. That's pretty much all, all they are. I think you always got to lean into the Tampa Bay on the NFC side because, I mean, Tom Brady's just that guy. Um, regardless of how – that's the only team I feel like regardless of how bad they're playing, you'll probably say, you know what, I still can trust Tampa Bay in the playoffs because they're just one of those teams that, like, you know, and it's really – it's honestly just because of Brady but and, and all he's done. But, like, are the Rams about to fall off? <laughs> right? Like, I feel like everybody felt like the Rams were good where this big Super Bowl contenders and they sign all these guys and – now they play two of the worst games they could play all year. And their losses have been I feel I feel like their losses have been far worse than their wins. Right. Like like their losses they have been boat races. Win. Yeah. They have been losses. just absolute drubbings. Exactly. And that's that's the thing. Like I'm like, I don't want to read too much into three losses, but still. I mean, and then like I feel like there's like top tier teams in both conferences, but I feel like there's no clear cut who's going to put it all together and, and get, get to where they want to be. That's why I'm at with it. Um, but so I, think I, have I appreciate everything on. you just said. Um, my big thing, and, and you're right about the Rams the past, the past couple weeks, you're right. Although before that, I've been a fan of Matt Stafford for I don't know how long. Like, I've always said Matt Stafford is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and he was just on a crap team, and this year he's not. I still got to feel like, especially, I, I know you got the Bucs, right? You got the Bucs, you got the, the, the Packers standing in their way. If they put it all together, I feel like that Rams team – if you give Matt Stafford a chance in the playoffs with a decent team, I God, I got to feel Stafford gets a chance. Any thoughts on that? I I could I could piggyback on that. My issue with Stafford is is Stafford a winner? That's like when he he hasn't been in the pressure pack situation. Well, no, he's been on the year. Lions. Of course, he's not a winner. Well, uh, exactly. I was just about to say, I'm like that. That's not his fault. He here. I think people people have not given Matt Stafford his due respect. The the, the dude is not just good. He is elite. He is elite. And it was not not his fault that the management was in that to Detroit. They gave him Megatron, and that was it. He had it all. And they just – they kept – and the thing is they kept take, taking swings at all these – who whatever was high on their draft board rather than taking something that would actually be in terms of building around him or just give him protection. Because his the last few years in Detroit were bad, B-A-D bad. And he had what, one, maybe two playoff appearances? So I mean, yeah. he was just—he was cursed. I think cursed he, I, the second I, I want to say Detroit. I want to say he had three, and he was zero and three, if I'm not mistaken. But that's also my issue, right? If you're like, you look can, at his team. I mean, but you had you had one of the greatest receivers of all time. What 
What more can you ask for? You like a defense? They didn't have a defense when they went to the playoffs. That's my that's my true question. They didn't have a defense when they had no. The they somehow. haven't. The Lions haven't had a defense in twenty years. If they if they had name they no had, wait stop name three players that went all pro on the Lions defense in twenty years. Go. You got twenty seconds. Darius De- Slay De- and Dominican Sue was also a great one. And I, I probably oh, that's a, to be no, stop it with that. He wasn't, was with he wasn't a stud. He wasn't a stud. That's where he got not with them. No, and, and here's the thing. For me, she was would have been the only she would have been the only guy that I could think of. Other than that, maybe Trey Flowers, but that would have been a better one two combination. Sue was just was just a you know a wrecker up the middle, but yeah, I mean, uh, other than um other than him bouncing around between Tampa Bay, LA, and then back to the Bucks, that he I, I don't know, like just to me, he didn't who who was their stud linebackers? Who was their stud corners? It's just like it's it's got to be more than just one complete package. Now those that. years, those years, they were probably more opportunistic. If they got a little bit of a lead, then you can pin your ears back when you know the game uh, game plan changes. I mean, really, the only two great defensive players that I can ever remember the Lions ever having. Would be with exception, you know, like maybe not the biggest name, but you can sue and Chris Spielman, and that's in a thirty-year period. Well, and I and I think too, like, like that defense they had when Dom can sue was a good defense. I don't remember the rankings because I don't. I mean, I don't religiously watch the Lions to know. Oh but, yeah, just perception. But that deep that defense was good. I remember it. It was good. Well, they I couldn't remember. have been good. They could have been some guys you knew. They couldn't have been good. They were a good unit. They may not have had like every star in the world, but they didn't have an all-star team because they were the Lions. But they made the playoffs off of something that wasn't just Matt Stafford's arm. Matt Matt Stafford has put up a lot of empty calories to me. He's put up great numbers and done nothing with it. This is his year to show it. Yes, I agree with that. This is his year to show it. My question is, when the pressure's on, it's one and done, can he do it? Yes, I think he can. And I welcome, think this yeah. is a proven welcome, year. Welcome him. to the debate show of the Detroit Lions. I, yeah, well, I didn't plan <laughs> they on that. A little I debate, right? <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm such a oh. Matt Stafford fan that, like, he has an opportunity, and, like, it's now or never for him. Well, and again, like, like we said, he has the opportunity now. He never had the opportunity in Detroit just because it was a shitty situation for him. Like it was, it was nothing that he could control. I always felt bad for Calvin Johnson as well. Amazing receiver, shitty team. I would love to have seen him on a, a, on a better team because I think both of them deserve a a Super Bowl. you know, at least, you know, a chance to get there. Never would have done that with, with the lions. You know, but we'll, we'll unfortunately we'll see that with with Calvin. But maybe I that. think I think Calvin Johnson, if you go athletic uh, athletic ability at least, is almost on that Randy Moss level, who I put above and beyond anybody receiver wise. Yeah, Jerry Rice has all the stats. I get that, <laughs> but like Randy Moss, athletically as a receiver, is the best ever. I put Calvin Johnson. 1B, honestly. And, you know, he just never – and I don't know why, like, that all happened with Detroit. I don't know the answer. I'm not an NFL coach. But they both should have gotten their opportunities. Casey's 100% right. Spot on. Spot on. I like it. Um, and I'm glad you brought it up because we haven't really – I mean, we've talked about Matt Stafford, and, and I don't think I don't think any of us feel like Matt Stafford is not talented. Um, cause I, even like when he got traded to the Rams, I was like, I'm, I'm happy for him cause he deserves it. If he would have got traded to the Colts, cause then the Colts were looking into him. Um, and, you know, I was excited for him cause I think he, he does deserve an opportunity with, to get a chance to play with not only talent, but also, you know, a competent head coach, a competent, uh, you know, offensive coordinator that can really rally around, you know, his skill set, which he has, you know, he has a lot of, a lot of those skills. I, I was even thinking about it, um, they were talking about something. They were talking about guys. I think they were talking about Mahomes. 
uh, on Sunday night or whatever it was. They were talking, or it may have been the 425 game last week. I, I remember it, but they were talking about Mahomes and how he throws it sidearm and all this. And, you know, he like revolutionized it. And I was like, no, he didn't. Matt Stafford did that. You know, I was like, Matt Stafford was the first, like, and they didn't mention Matt Stafford. And I was a little surprised, but I was like, no, Matt Stafford was the one who started this whole sidearm, change your arm angle to get it, you know, through these little windows and stuff like that. That was Matt. You know, I remember watching Matt Stafford and they used to praise him about that. And I was like, yeah, like, no, it was Matt Stafford who did that. Like, yeah. Cause so, I mean, I tr- trust and believe I, I do like Matt Stafford. I just feel like at the same time, I want, I want him to get his opportunity to prove it, but at the same time, I want to see him prove it. No, I it's get right. you, and you're and you're, you're, it's okay. Yeah, you're not. It's you're not burying him, but <laughs> I get it. I get it. I do. And and by the way, how's Jared Goff doing this year? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> well, now, yeah. Now, and, and I guess the thing is, like you. You take any – I mean, you can take any guy any guy, and put him in that particular situation. I think it shows how bad the situation was too, especially on the back end when you don't have Calvin, um, you know, when you don't have, you know, those – I mean, they practically got rid of all their – except for drafting DeAndre Swift, got rid of all the talent they could uh, as soon as they could. As soon as they could. Uh, of course, now we're having the conversation about the 0 and, and 9 and 1 Lions, so – I apologize for that. That's not what my intention was, but just wanted to bring that that point up about Matt Stafford. But going forward for the playoffs this year, I mean, like I said, my pick was the Cardinals. You got a constant in the Buccaneers, but we're like halfway through the year. And the NFC side, I mean, you got the Buccaneers. Other than that, you don't know what else is happening. Who's going to face the Buccaneers? I got like the Packers look okay. You yeah. got Aaron Rodgers, but who else is going to be that constant? That one that you can say they can beat Tom Brady. And, Anybody. Yeah. And, and I think it's, I think it goes back to, um, you know, we, we talked about like playoff experience. I, you know, I think we put this pressure on these younger players to come in and have this, this ridiculous playoff run, right? Not everybody's Mahomes, not everybody's even Joe, not everybody's Mark Sanchez who had this early playoff success or is in the perfect situation to get this early playoff success. So that's the one thing about like Kyler Murray too. I'm like, I think Kyler's great. I love Kyler. But at the same time, I think it's going to take him a couple of playoff appearances to get to where he wants to get. You don't just get to the playoffs and get to the Super Bowl. There's only a handful of quarterbacks where that happens. Uh, you know, even even still, um, while we're on the discussion of Super Bowls, I want to mention this um, because you know, shout out, shout out, shout out to my my guy Adam over there. I want to mention this real quick. Um, a lot of people are like Baker can't take the Browns to the Super Bowl, um, and my issue is once again, it's it's another thing of why are we putting so much pressure on Baker? to take you to the Super Bowl within his first five years. Like, he's done what he's supposed to do. He was drafted number one to turn the team around. What has he done? He's turned the team around. They're winning games. They're not – I mean, they're not dead in the water. They're not the Detroit Lions still. I feel like Baker deserves a little more credit for what he's done. Has it been perfect? No. But I was talking to Adam about this in in one of our group chats. Um, and, and I was kind of just like, if the system is not designed for you to throw for 5,000 yards, I'm sorry, you're probably not going to throw for 5,000 yards because you got a, a stud running back in Nick Chubb. You got another stud running back in Kareem is back. I mean, Kareem Hunt, right? You got a, like two stud running backs that are really good at what they do. Why would I put all my pressure on Baker Mayfield to make a play? Every single time when I got a, a off an offensive line that's predicated on the run and running backs who can run the football, I don't get it. Well, because it's freaking Baker Mayfield. So if you're a quarter and, and I like Baker Mayfield, I like him very much. He's very talented and very impressed with what he's done with the Browns. I will say this. 
you put yourself out there and we're going to go past football. We're going to go to the celebrity part, right? Uh, if you're going to be in advertisements and up on social media and get those endorsements and those sponsorships, you better produce, which he did. He has the past couple of years, I feel. This year, kind of falling short. Uh, we go back to the football part. Their team is fine. Like there's the Browns are those those guys could be a wild card team and make it to the Super Bowl. I have no doubt about that. But you're not going to sit here and tell me that the Browns and Baker Mayfield are an elite team in the AFC. That's just I would believe in the Patriots and Matt Jones right now, way before the Browns. So I that one. Yeah, I, 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 I think I that, honestly, that. I think the only reason that you would that you would do that is not. I don't think it's on the merit of Matt Jones. I think it's on the merit of Bill Belichick. Okay, fine. But fine. but I think everybody I was think dogging gonna, Bill Belichick last year, weren't so, they? Bill so, Belichick's nothing without Tom Brady. Now he has Matt Jones. Okay, he's gonna make another Tom Brady. Like my, here we are. Is he? I don't know. But my my issue, my another Tom Brady is hard to make. My issue is this, right? Because I feel like we're gonna we're gonna lean on this merit of Mac. Is Mac Jones better than Baker Mayfield? Oh, we don't know that yet. We don't know, we don't that, know yet. that. We don't know that yet. So, like you said, Bill Belichick is a great coach, all time great coach, probably one of the best, if not the best, right? So. When do we stop blaming Baker and start blaming everything else? I I, I haven't stopped blaming Baker. I never and, – and for the record, I never liked Baker Mayfield. My wife liked Baker Mayfield, so I started paying attention. I still don't like that guy. But apparently he – what? They were what, 11 – were they 11 and 5 last year? 11 and 5. 11 and 5. Yeah. So they were a good team last year. They were decent. And what are they this year? Because Mr. Kareem is back, knows what's going on. There's a, yes, they, they, right now they are they are in six. They're six and five. And 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 the the because me me and DJ have, have had this, albeit you know tongue in cheek, kind of contrarian argument or slash friendly debate. We have, we have collectively we have collectively to our to our guys for him Lamar for me Baker um, who gets criticized more and I said I believe it's Baker and he believes it's it's Lamar now again none of us will neither one of us will budge off of that so I don't want to I don't want to open up that can of words but my, my thing and it, it's something that DJ said about Lamar and I'm saying about Baker. He is not immune to criticism. I am. I am no way, shape, or form, you know, saying that. My 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 backing of him is that this is the first guy since Tim Couch that has started three straight seasons. We haven't had that. We haven't had that before. I mean, up you know after Tim Couch, we hadn't had that that long list on the back of that jersey. Spurgeon Wyman, Ty Detmer, Charlie Charlie Whitehurst. Jeff Garcia, Deshaun Kaiser, Johnny fucking Manziel. Yeah, I think you right. I, I think you see where I'm going with here. He yeah. has given a semblance of hope that Cleveland has not experienced since Bernie. To where, like, this is our guy. Now, my, my everything you just said, I, I completely get. I, I completely understand. My the, the my counter to that too is, and I said it earlier this year, especially when the homes started to shit the bed a little bit. I'm like, I keep hearing all this talk about Baker and the commercials. I better hear the same energy from Mahomes. <laughs> but but I get it. It's like yes, you if you are on that level of getting advertisements and you know, et cetera, et cetera, you have a expectation, and if you're watching the game. And then in between the commercials, at home with Baker Mayfield, you're like, God, damn, why do I got to watch this again? But a lot of people then started getting quiet last year because he was a stud the second half of the year. Last year, the first the first half of the year, he was figuring it out. 
no no true preseason. You only you only had limited camp. You had no preseason, and their first live. Uh, ball with this new coach and this new system was against the Ravens and they got waxed 30 something to six. Then they come back, they bounce right back uh, from to, to Cincy and it's like, okay, this is what it could be. But it wasn't until that second Cincy game where the back half of the season, and this isn't hyperbole, this isn't opinion, this is fact. Baker was the number four quarterback in the league for, again, the, the whole shebang. Completion percentage, you know, blah, blah, blah. He, I mean, he threw 20 touchdowns and two interceptions. And I think this year, too, people are waiting for that. And, look, everybody deals with injuries. I'm not just saying it's the Browns. But that has been a big, I think, a big contributor to our inconsistencies. You got to, you still got to play better. You still have to, quote, find a way. You need to do, for what it is, you need to do what, what the, the Ravens are doing. They have injuries, 15 guys. They injuries, you say? Let me get to my point, sir. <laughs> We're filibustering for 36 minutes and we haven't got to the pigs. Just let me get my point. In. But anyway, I said, you need to do it with what the Ravens are doing. They have 15 guys, 15 guys on IR, and they are seven and three, I believe. Whatever. They have the culture, they have the buy into. Harbaugh and the coaches that that they have that level of consistency, which is why and I hate to fucking do this. It's why you can't fully ever count out the Steelers because they have a history of figuring it out. They were dead in the water after the first five weeks. Look where they're at now. Granted, albeit that I think they they beaten up on some some bad teams, but n- nonetheless. But anyway, back with Baker. He is the he has been the more competent QB that the Browns have had against you know since Bernie rookie touchdown uh, record without starting three games got got off the Schneid on the playoff appearance got off the Schneid on the playoff win which again I would like to point out to DJ that it took Baker one time and it took Lamar free <laughs> I know you're gonna say. You're going to say, why didn't he do it this year? Why didn't he do it that year? Anyway, so. If you don't make it to the playoffs, you can't win. Is it? Exactly. Go fuck yourself. Anyway, the other thing. I mean, the other thing that I've always. This is the same guy who's a fan of the Sixers who are on their, what, year 16 of their comeback? Is it? What is that? (laughs) And no, this is not me. I don't watch basketball. What's. What, what's Chicago been doing since Michael Jordan retired? Just asking. Shut up. <laughs> no. Anyway, anyway. So, like, like in terms of Baker's physical play, you, could, you, we could c- critique this. We could critique that. I've always just said that, even through the Browns' success, it was always something else. Like they couldn't just, they couldn't just, just put him over and say, he's a good quarterback. If he would have kept. What he did the second half of the year last year into this year, I would say that he's in the like in the, at least the top top twelve, possibly top ten. That didn't happen. Right now he's he's middling, and again, yes, he he is injured. His his stats have plummeted after the the Texans game. But this is why you have Kareem Hunt. This is why you have Nick Chubb. But either way, he is what exactly the Browns have needed. And I understand the polarizing figure because how he was in college. But, hey, I'm a Ohio State fan. He planted the flag in the middle of the horseshoe. And I was like, damn, you know what? That's a dick move. But you know what? I would want that guy on my team. And I was lucky enough to have him on my team. So, again, I'm ride or die with him until they they decide that he's not the guy or, you know, or what have you. I mean, I hope he's with us for a long time. I don't I don't disagree with any of that. In fact, Baker made me a fan of his with that second half that you just mentioned. Like uh by far. Um it, his team around him and then he gets like and please tell me if I'm wrong, what the hell happened with Odell? Like and then, you know, uh Cream Hunt gets hurt, you know, and they had they had nothing else there. 
right? But they're still carrying a winning record. And I want to go back to, was there something I heard about there was a debate between Baker and Lamar Jackson? Yeah, we, we had a, me and DJ had a, had a debate on who got criticized more. And I, I feel that it's Baker and he feels that it's Lamar. And we've had, we have did a full, a full video on it uh, before. And it was a stalemate. Just, just trying to come to an understanding, but more giving, more giving our thoughts as to why. And I, and I do believe we both have uh, valid reasons. Um, I just, I just say, I think, you kind of have to back off of that a little bit when you win MVP. I think I think you're you're you're, you're set for a while. Well, and, and it uh, hey, I want the Browns to succeed. Like I really do. I don't hate the Browns, um, but I will say I'll I'll let myself off with this. Uh, you forgot Vinny Testaverde in your whole list of people. Oh no, that, it, very that's very true, very true. And actually, he was. He also forgot my boy Brandon Weeden. He forgot my boy Brandon Weed, my boy Colt McCoy out here. My boy Colt Bryson, McCoy, Brandon, 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 Brandon Weeden, Brandon Weeden was was eligible for an AARP card when he got into the league. <laughs> You're not you wrong. Forgot, you forgot about <laughs> so, but in, in, uh, Adam. You know what's funny though, and and I don't know if I ever told you this, but. Uh, I, I always like to brag that Brian Hoyer was the only uh, Browns quarterback with a winning record in the past 20 years before Baker. That was all my, always my claim to fame when I talked about the Browns. I'm like, but Brian Hoyer, though, that Brian Hoyer. <laughs> no, but believe it or not, actually, b- b- believe it or not, you knew what I would have said if if I knew you then. You knew what I would have said? I would have said it would have been Derek Anderson or Kelly Holcomb. Didn't, and Derek Anderson had a playoff run. Not with us. In nine in nineteen ninety-nine, if you double check your records. For the- Go ahead, check it. I'm telling you, the Browns made the playoffs in nineteen ninety-nine with Derek Anderson. No. Maybe it was two thousand. No, we, we when we had Derek Anderson it was two thousand and seven. In in ninety nine, that's when we came back. We were two and fourteen. Oh, that was Tim Couch. You're right. You're yeah, right. yeah. Tim, yeah. Tim Couch. We had Tim Couch. We went to the playoffs in '02 with Tim Couch, but that was at the play of Kelly Holcomb at the last part of the year. We should have went to the playoffs with Derek Anderson, but we lost to the Bengals, and then we had to rely on the Colts to beat the Titans. And the Colts were already already had their playoff spot, and they sat Peyton Manning. <laughs> I swear, Derek Anderson made the playoffs with the Browns, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I, was like, I, I wish it, but no, just one, one more quick thing. Cause you had asked about Odell. <clears throat> it'll, it'll be debated to death. Like why it just, it just didn't work. Cause, and I, and I think people tend to gloss over this. He had a thousand yards in 19 when he first got with them, but that was a disastrous year because everybody was saying they had like the fourth best, fourth best odds to make the Super Bowl, And I'm just like, don't do that. Let's win the division first. Let's let's babysit this a little bit because they they came off the seven eight and one year, which felt like felt like you know fifteen and one compared to the years prior. But it was a solid season. M- made whispers of the playoffs, but it wasn't until the the last week of the year where they were mathematically out of it. But anyway, twenty nineteen happens. It was a bad coaching hire from Freddie, albeit I did like Freddie as as a guy, but he wasn't. He wasn't right for the job. And that was, again, management taking these names in terms of the coaching staff, taking these names and say, hey, hey, you guys make it work. There was no cohesiveness. There was no there, there was no pattern of 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 uh, of personnel or the same type of ideology in terms of play calling. It was just it was like I said, it was just a disaster last year. Again. The, no preseason because they, they didn't have time to really gel. And then as as the year started to trickle along, though, him and Odell, Baker and Odell started to actually get a little bit of of a of a continuity. But the, like DJ said, the way that our offense is set up, it's not set up for a receiver to be the guy. Odell was a, an important piece because, again, of what he um, – 
what he brings out in terms of, you know, double coverage and that opens up for somebody else, blah, 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 blah. And then he got hurt. And that's when Baker took off. Now I will never be in that camp of the Browns were better without Odell that stretch last year. We could have used him. <clears throat> we could have used him in that Monday night game against Baltimore. We definitely could have used him in that playoff game against the chiefs. We, everybody, the other thing, everybody was so wanting it to be with the with, with what he was with the Giants. Eight catches, <clears throat> eight catches, a hundred plus yards a game. You know, blah 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 blah. It's just never going to be that way. And as time went on this year, it was pretty much you know again the writing was on the wall. It's just like it's just it's just not going to work with them. All right, hopefully JD will get back in here at some point. Let's just get jump into the picks and we'll. Uh, well, well, yeah. Casey will find him. Um, Casey, scavenger hunt, do it. Um, let's jump into the Thanksgiving festivities. Um, this is well, actually, twelve thirty. Um, is is like the the turkey still cooking? Uh, you still got the gravy on the, you know, uh, the gravy still in the can, uh, waiting waiting to be opened. Um, we got the Bears at the Lions. The Bears. The, the Bears. I mean, the Lions could win this game, but will they? Nah. Uh, Bears. Nah. The Bears. Uh, Adam, I feel like you're going a different way than we are on this one. Because you said Nagy's getting fired. So if Nagy to, for Nagy to get fired, he would he must have to lose this game to get fired. Adam? Adam? Adam, what you do? I'm, I'm All right. right. Well, sorry, maybe, I was... Maybe, I was maybe, Shut up. My brother, my brother shut says up. that. Shut up. My brother shut says up. that the Bears shut up. are going to win shut this up. one here. They're going to blow up. him out. And my shut and my up. brother is never wrong. He just had his 37th heart attack today. Okay, continue. Your turn, Adam. You you said, you when he has 37 yes. heart attacks in a day, you know he's right, okay? And... Uh, Didn't expect to stop there, but okay. Uh, Adam. And, anyway, yes, Lions. I'm I'm willing this into existence. Let them get off the schneid. It's Thanksgiving. They played hard. They've played hard all year. They've only been shellacked by two teams. They hung around with us with Tim Boyle, for God's sakes. Tim Boyle. And boy is he. Who was him. horrible, by the way. <clears throat> oh, d- terrible, terrible. And, and, and the thing is, that's the thing. I didn't know what to expect, but that was bad. That was bad. But I think golf is playing. No Justin Fields. The Red Rocket is just going to be a little tiny red pistol. So come on, Lions. Maggie, as, bye-bye. As much as uh, we have been like, well, look what Jay Goff's doing. Well, we saw what his replacement could do with that roster. Just saying. Um, mm-hmm. just, keep, just keep Kenny Galladay. Just keep him. Right. Tragic. Um Moving on to the Raiders at the Cowboys, another team that plays every single year on Thanksgiving. I'm not talking about the Raiders. Um, I want to go with the Raiders upset here, but I just don't think the Raiders are a very good team. First off, they've lost a lot. Uh, to lose Henry Rose and DeMond on that is big. Uh, secondly, they weren't that good to begin with. So I'm going with the Cowboys. Cowboys went on Thanksgiving. It's delicious and nutritious. It's not. not. Right, right, baby. It's pretty horrible. It's a little flat. Because I I need need my my, 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 my wins to go up, so I'm going with the Cowboys. (laughs) Uh, uh, Adam, you going to pick the Raiders for us? Wait, wait, what? Did he just say the Cowboys? He did. After it's he only looked at me like I was foolish. Wow, I had already, I had already written down, writ, I have already written down the the, the, the Raiders. So the I'm Raiders. going Cowgirls as well. I, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> Casey, you so far behind. You could literally just pick what you want at this point. I think <laughs> I'm picking the refs. <laughs> uh, the Bills at the Saints. I'm going with the Bills. The Saints aren't that darn good either. 
I mean, not to say the Bills are great, but the Saints aren't that good at all. Uh, the Bills will will get it back going. So I'm going with the Bills. They can't be they can't be as bad as they've looked in the past couple of weeks, right? Go Bills. Um, Casey, we already know where you're going, so there's no need to even. Wait, what's what's the what's the game again? I kind of wanted to send you like. A, a funny message after they lost to like the Jaguars and be like the Williams. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the Bills at the Saints. This is this is probably after you get your get your Thanksgiving meal in you. You know you think you know the the second game you'll probably be like just getting to the cookout or or, or the, the the festivities, yeah, and then I'm, the third I'm, game I'm you'll going, be full. I'm going with the Williams. The the, the Williams. Okay. I so believe with the D'Angelo Williams. Okay. I believe in the no, not that Williams, not that one. <laughs> uh, moving on to the Sunday games, I'm trying to keep an eye and see if Joe comes well, back. Well, I, I guess I guess I'm not picking. So. Oh my bad. Sorry, I, my bad. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, but not. No, but we know for darn sure you're not picking the dang on Saints. Well, I mean, I mean, you you kind of buried Matthew Stafford, so I'm I'm a little I'm a little sus of you right now, but I'm going with the Black Eyed Peas, the Will I Ams. Okay. I literally started to write down the Williams on my screen. <laughs> Damn you, Casey! Right. One o'clock, the <laughs> bucket. <laughs> the Buccaneers at the Colts. I think the Colts get another upset victory here against the Buccaneers. Um, the Colts are a good team. Like I said before, they had a rough start to the season because they played a lot of good teams. That's how that works. Um, the Buccaneers are good. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like the, I, the Colts are in this almost like a must-win mode right now, whereas I think the Buccaneers c- could be in that type of mode, but not nearly as bad as um, and of course, if they're going for the number one seed, but not nearly as bad as I think the Colts are, because the Colts are playing for their season more than anything. So I'm going, I'm going Colts. Case, this man going to pick against the Colts with a Colts uh, quarter zip on. Imagine Casey having to pick Tom Brady. Imagine <laughs> Casey picking Tom Brady against the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that's funny. Also, uh, uh, while while Casey's muted, um, Adam, I want to know if if Justin doesn't pick the three games on Thanksgiving, does he automatically lose? Yes. Because I can guarantee you he's going to forget. <laughs> also, uh, I'm, I'm going to let Adam go first because I, I, need, I need time. I need – He's going to really pick Tom Brady <laughs> against the Colts? He's really I need this time to think about this it. This is great. Uh, this is great. This is great. Um, but which, by the way, um, yes, yes, I, 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 do, I do believe that is. I, I have, I, I decide all ties in that in that regard. So I agree with that sentiment. So Justin, if you're listening, he's not. Keep, I mean, the, keep, keep status quo. He's probably not listening. We, we know Justin's not. He's not not even going to watch his back. Like we know Justin. Like so. Here's here's the scenario. Here's the scenario. There's 20 seconds left. It's tied. Joe Bucks just had another gonna, heart attack. Oh. Joe just had another heart attack. Bucks are going to try to put go down the field just to kick the field goal. But oh, break, break down in the secondary, and Tom Brady hits Mike Evans for a 70 yard bomb and goes into the end zone and puts him ahead. Uh, they, it off. they give it back to the Colts. Here's the time for Wentz to reclaim respect and glory how he, of how he was with the Eagles. And the very first pass, he throws a pick six as a walk-off. Bucks, motherfucker. I, I got an even better story. Let's just say Tom Brady runs a QB draw from 70 yards out and outruns all the Colts' defense. <laughs> And doesn't fall down like Daniel Jones. <laughs> He's not fast enough to fall down like Daniel Jones. They get... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Can't fall down if you ain't that fast. <laughs> All right. Uh, Casey, it's on you, brother. 
I don't think you took enough time, Adam. I think it's think he did. He gave you a, a oh, literal story the Colts, at the end of the game. And, then the, and the Colts get the ball back, and they're trying to push it down the field. Aaron Wings throws another pass. Is, is that enough? Bucks. <laughs> wow. wow. Did I just will that into existence? Wow, I think you did. Uh, moving on. Oh, uh, this this is a game fitting of Thanksgiving Day, I feel like. The Jets at the Texans. <laughs> in, inmate game of the week. <laughs> oh, this going to be – they're going to flex this out into the Sunday night game. Um, <laughs> and I can't say next because you're like, okay, but who's the winner? <laughs> I'm going with – the Texans don't trust the Jets. Probably won't ever trust the Jets. Texans, it is. Casey, <gasps> no, Joe's playing. Wait a minute. Wait just a doggone minute here. I'm going with the Jets, oh. baby. Oh, Joe Flacco versus Tyrod Taylor. How can I live? Who do I cheer for? This may be actually a, a game, good game in my heart. I'm going with the Jets, Adam. I'm going with the Jets. Give me the Jets. Give me the you're Jets. Going, Give me Joe Flacco going, and the Jets. No, you're going with the Tets. Tits? <laughs> going with the Tets. Uh, uh, are you going with that too, uh, Adam? Just curious. Uh, I, I, I'm, I want to know what Casey's going to go with. Then I'm going with the Jets. You going? With, oh, you you going with the Tets? I mean, if you if you listen and pay attention. It, it, well, if you speak up and not be soft spoken like a bitch, listen here, you bitch. <laughs> Go get Judy's candles, you fucking bitch. You're the we. You're the reason Joe's phone probably died. You're the reason. You're the reason. Maybe yes. Maybe why? Why would they do that to Daniel? Why would they hurt his wrist? <laughs> well, just because of that. I'm going with TT. I'm going with Tyrod, baby. The titties? Who wins in a row? He going with the titties. I'm going with the Jacksons. Oh. The Jacksons. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. The, the Eagles at the Giants. Another MA game of the week. Um, I'm going with the Eagles. I think we're all going with the Eagles. I mean, Adam, unless you want to <laughs> hop on the Giants train for this week. Isn't your boy on the Giants, though? <laughs> it don't mean I trust him. I, I mean, I like Eli Manning, too, but they never who's wanted he gonna, to Who's he going to throw it to this week? This, this, is, he, this time he's, he's going to throw it to he's going to throw to one of the coaches. You remember all those times I picked the Giants? This is before Daniel Jones. I picked the Giants to win the division, and they just repeatedly just broke my heart. Multiple seasons over. They had the talent. They just weren't good. They got um, more talent now, and, they're, and they still suck. But that's why Jason Garrett got fired. <laughs> and guess who's calling plays now? Joe Judge? No. Me. Freddie? Kitchens. Oh wow. He's gonna be the reason they turn the season around. The Panthers. At... Wait, 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 wait. Wait, did you want to pick the Giants or something? <laughs> you don't know. No, I'm going with the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> the Panthers at the Dolphins. I'm going with the Panthers. Casey. The Fins get the win. See, this, see, uh, Adam, this is one of those picks where he just don't care. I don't. <laughs> you really don't. You really I really don't. don't. So wait, are, uh, like, are they actually gonna are they actually gonna stick with Cam? Mm-hmm. I think so. I'm gonna say because they, they, that's all so. it's been. They, they they brought they've just brought him in for three or four plays, but Matt rules like, all right, come on, PJ Walker. Yeah, I well like PJ Walker freaking- too. He, he might as well be freaking Aldo Montoya. Um, see, again, like I have to I, I have to do some type of contrarian view, but 
Panthers, I guess. Okay. The Titans at the Patriots. It's a good game right there. Um, Just to continue to feed into the frauds I think the Titans are, the Patriots. No, no I don't think the Patriots are that great. Um, I mean, I, I'm, congratulations for still having Bill Belichick. I'm proud of you. Um, congratulations that Mac, Mac Jones is playing pretty decently. But at the end of the day, I still don't think they're that great. Are they better than the Bills? No, they're not. And I don't even think the Bills are that great. Titans lose this game to the Patriots. Go Patriots. <sighs> Reluctantly. Um, Casey. In a game where Casey has to pick either the Patriots or a division foe Titans. <laughs> where will he go? I got to go in my division, around my division. <laughs> I'm going to go in my division. <laughs> I sound like the division. Around my division, I'm going to look at another division, kind of check it out, scope it out, see how we're doing. Go back into my division, see what the temperature's like in there. Because if it's too and, hot, if it's too cold, I don't like it. Don't, uh, don't forget about not showing up to your division. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> I'm not going to show up to my division. I'm going to make a sandwich. I'm going to eat the sandwich. I'm going to order a pizza. Pizza going to get here. I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm not in the mood for pizza. And then I'm going to pick the, 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 the Patriots. What? Adam Mike Vrabel gets his guys ready and bounce back and this is partially a spiteful pick the Titans ay, ay, ay. all right the, <laughs> the Steelers at the Bengals I'm still waiting on the Bengals collapse but maybe the Bengals are actually good this year speaking um, of spiteful picks guess who's still staying on the bench <laughs> we ain't even got to the Bills pick yet, have we? Or have we? We, 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 anyway. already, we already did the Bills. Oh, we did. Oh, they played on Thanksgiving. I forgot about that. Anyway. Well, yeah. um, Nobody right. brought up the spiteful pick earlier, so I couldn't say it. Well, we, you kind of did. You kind of did. Um, the Steelers at the Bengals in the most lose-lose game of the week. Uh, I'm going to go with the Bengals because as much as I want the Bengals to collapse, I also think the Steelers are hot garbage. So, I'm going with the Bengals. Casey. I'm going with uh, the Bengals. Adam. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun games. <laughs> okay. I like it. Moving on to the Falcons at the J The Falcons at the Jaguars. I mean, put it on Monday night. Oh my God! <laughs> That's bad. That's oh really my God. Like, yeah, this is this is the this is the Monday Night Raw segment. That is this this game. I don't know who to pick. The Falcons are really bad, <laughs> but the Falcons Jaguars are, are also really bad. But this will be the random game where the Falcons decide to show up. They've shown up. It's just the the. The, the the game that the Jags decided to show up, they scored nine points and won. <laughs> um, I'm going with the Jags. I don't want to, but I don't trust the Falcons either. Jaguars. They're it's, gutless. It's gutless. I'm gutless for picking the non-gutless team? Well, I guess they're both gutless. <laughs> I'm going inside my division. <laughs> Around my division. Around my division. Pizza realize, oh, that's a good pizza. Then realize that it won it. Between, between this the real the twins. They go go, twins. This, this is a real bad game. Going to the it's Narnia in his division. He gonna take He's his division bad. to Narnia. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Um, I'm okay. I don't want to, but I'm going with the Jaguars. Jaguars. Okay. Adam? Matty Ice. The Falcons, <laughs> baby. Okay. Setting up um, so perfectly. Also, <laughs> also, can we can we put the who picked who <laughs> during each week in the chat? 
because I keep forgetting who I pick, and then I don't know who to cheer for on Sunday. It's very sad. Well, well I'm like, well, that's, wait, did that's I pick why, the Falcons? Wait, did I pick the Jets? That's that's why that's why you gotta you, you gotta hit me up because again, as we do this, I write the stuff down. Now I will say the only time we did that was when the Cowboys were getting their dicks kicked in. We're like, hey, we all picked the the, the Broncos, right? That's what we did, right? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the Broncos, the Chargers at the Broncos. Go, Chargers, go. Casey, is anybody picking the Broncos? Let's just be honest about this one. Go, Chargers, go. Adam, you want to make it the clean sweep? I, it, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's something. There's something about Herbert that I'm starting not to like, and I ain't never seen it, him play well in the cold. Is it all the? Is it all the? Is it all the hype he getting for no reason? Sorry. Is it no? This dude literally gets hype for being six six. That's literally like his claim to fame. They're like he's six well, six and has I nice do. hair. Here, here's the thing. Here's, I do think Justin Herbert is good. I, but I, I think agree. it was kind of the. I think I think it's the product of. He he literally had no highlights in college because Oregon did not know what to do with him. So he really he he RKO'd. He he came out of nowhere. So he is kind of he is a nice star. I do think he's good, but with the exception of the Steelers game, he is the post the game against us, he's been he's been partially floundering. Uh, so and, and the other thing too that doesn't help is that their defense is bad. And I'm talking about this is a bad defense with Joey Bosa, for God's sakes. But no, like, like again, and it's starting to get cold, and we know how that air is out there, out in Denver. So uh, screw it, I'll, I'll take, I'll take the Broncos. Okay, wow, I'm, I'm in shock. This will be a good one. It probably should be. Plus, like and, the- and also too, also too, I do want to say the, the Broncos defense is still not bad, and that's without Von Miller. Okay. Um, that's true. Uh, this game should probably be like the Monday night game, but whatever. Um, the Rams at the Packers should be a good game. Coming from beautiful L.A. to cold and windy Green Bay. I'm so I, – I believe in the Rams. I do. I love Matt Stafford. He's played Detroit forever. Uh, but that's a – that's a good trip and, and a, a lot of a lot of moving pieces. I'm going Packers. I'm going with the Packers. I don't believe in the Packers either, but I'm going with the Packers. Casey, when is their bye week? Have they not had a bye week yet? What's the weather like this cold. In, in Green Bay this, this probably, week? Probably cold. It's cold. It's cold. But like is it is it like the frozen tundra cold yet? It may be snowing. In it, it, it's it's cold. It's 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 just it's cold. So they have the advantage, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's going to be 36 cold. degrees. I'm going with. Which isn't that cold when, when it comes to Pat it. Oh, Pat Okay. By the time the end of the game comes up, it'll be like 29-ish degrees. Um, Adam. Lambo. Has not been kind to the Rams, and especially last time they were there, they got their teeth kicked in by the Packers. The Packers' defense the last month have been really, really good. So give me the Packers. I don't know. I I didn't. I I don't know why I kind of partially went Thunderbolt (laughs) right there, but I kind of want to switch switch around and go with the Rams. The Vikings at the Niners. This game. Uh, this is one of those games where the Vikings probably will somehow win it. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Niners. Casey. I'm going with the Kangs, baby. The Kangs. The Kangs are the Minnesotas. Um, the Kangs are the Minnesotas, baby. Adam. Behold the King. The King of Kings. Vikings. Vikings. Starting to starting to turn the corner a little bit. Got the upset with the from the Packers last week. 
telling you. Yeah, they, they, uh, we call that an anomaly. That the Vikings, they're they're not going to be good. Moving on. Um, okay. Sunday okay. night. Sunday night football. Down. <laughs> Sorry, I picked them multiple times while they were up, and they decided to fall back down on their own. So, uh, but they won. Sunday night. <laughs> Sunday night football. The Browns <laughs> at the Ravens. Casey, because that's the only. Casey, because we all know what we're going with. <laughs> yes, Casey. Oh, hey, look, Joe's active. I wonder if he'll come back in. What? Oh, it's my. Oh, my turn. It's my turn. Um. I think Joe didn't like our takes, and he was just like, "Forget y'all." <laughs> yeah. You know mine, what? Mine were bad. They were bad. You know what? I. We left Baltimore for a reason, and I ain't going back there. So I'm going with the Browns. Atta boy, okay. atta boy. I may become an Orange Cassidy fan if we win this game. Oh, God. I mean, it's already <laughs> in your home. Might as well, uh, Adam, you want to go first? You want me to go first? You you know where I'm going, sir. <laughs> I know which uh, way you going. I don't want to say too much because, of course, we're going to do a preview yes. individually on this yeah. game. Yeah. Um, Ravens, I'm not saying take care of business because it's not one of those type of games. Uh, but at the same time, defensively, don't give up big plays because I know you like to against Baker Mayfield especially. Um, offensively, let's get going early, right? If you run a screen, back-to-back plays, one more day going down. Um, find some running game, right? I don't care if it's Flip Lindsay, pick him up. Um, because I would love to say Flip Lindsay and he actually be on the team. Um, because they don't want to play Tyson. I'm still upset about this. Don't understand it, but whatever. I think the Ravens can do this. They can win this game, especially at home. Um, not that they've been great at home this year, anyway. But still, they can. They, they could. They can take care of business on on, on this particular game. Um, let's get the Browns on a down week. Let's get the Browns on a down week. I'm going with the Ravens. I would say a blowout, but I'm never picking a blowout ever again in my life. Not this. What, what, but, uh, Do I really you, think it would happen? No. Let's be honest. You better know um, if you move. I'll, I'll talk more about why it could be a blowout though in the preview. So stay tuned. <clears throat> you better Adam. know. Adam. DJ, any, any, any thoughts on anything? Or listen, shall we move on? Listen, 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 listen. We understand the woes that are are happening. We we beat the we beat the the winless Lions last week, and we felt like it was a loss. But that's the type of things that the Browns have not had before, where they play a close game like that when they are on paper the better team. And even then, despite despite the, the the inept play from Baker, you still see that the Browns are still were still more talented. And again, just Dan Campbell, a couple of those. I mean, thank you for not going for it on fourth down, um, and and punting it back to us when we have Nick Chubb. So thank you very much. But in this particular game, you they have to disrupt. Lamar. They have to disrupt Lamar. This is the game. This is the game of why you drafted Grant Delpit. Why you drafted Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. This is the game to have the game of your lives. Put it in a sentence. Oh, sorry. I don't even know what you were trying to insinuate, sir. Owusu Koromoa is a name I probably will never be able to spell or say. Yeah, well, I, I can't, I, I won't, aside from Jeremiah, I am not even going to, I don't have, I don't have a prayer to pronounce the I, hyphenated name. I but, mean, that, but, that was about as bad as, is, not to the, the Kimbe Matumbo, you know? <laughs> not in <to> my house, <laughs> which is, which is like, here, try to, try to spell that. Uh, yeah, anyway, but. Here's the thing, though. But despite that, though, he has a cool nickname, J-O-K. It's perfect. And plus, it's easier to say that Jeremiah Owusu-Korpo. 
Don't you dare. Don't you dare disrespect. Dare disrespect you said it I said J O K. I didn't it is say cool. J O K. I'm not it even gonna cool. say the last like letter. It. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say the last letter. That's not that's it's, not it's, what it is. It's not what it is. It's, it's not what it is. Stop it. It will never be over. Let me let me tell you something, Ole Anderson. It will never be over. <laughs> anyway, again, th- those those are the two that I'm going to be looking at the most. I mean, aside from Miles, you know, Miles and Clowney, the Malik's. I- I'm expecting I'm expecting them to try to be disruptive as possible. But just keep containment. Do not open up on the middle. This needs to be a great game from Anthony Walker. But in particular, the the sideline to sideline movement and closing in the closing gap speed of of grant delpit this is the game where you have to be on guard you have to bring your a game um i hopefully joe woods can bring in those just those disguise blitz from troy hill because i think he's going to be back this week kind of like the stuff he did in cincinnati but obviously this is a different breed because of of the running attack of lamar And also, y'all, you get them in a predicament where it's fourth and long. Do not break containment and do not let Hollywood Brown run free. By the way, I did send Lamar a shipment of x before the so he can have his runs before the game and not during the game uh, because, because I, I think that'll be better football. But like I think what, that this is going to be it? an abs- this is going to be an absolute dog fight. It's going to come down to either Chase McLaughlin or Justin Tucker. Okay. Would it have been a better game though? Because you realize the Ravens were up by two possessions before them all went out, right? Your point. Oh, we was about to blow them. <laughs> we was about to, we about to take them doors, blow them off. We about to blow them off. Yeah, from, from the stand she left in the toilet. <laughs> You're lucky. You're lucky Lamar had to use the bathroom. You're lucky. Um, it didn't anyway. matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. But again, every time they, you guys are on Monday Night Football, Steve Levy likes to bring that fucking spot up. <laughs> Apparently, Superman oh. comes out of a toilet instead of a phone booth. <laughs> The new way anyway, Superman. it's gonna be it it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun game. It's gonna be a great game. It's gonna be classic old school uh division, you know, division game. So yeah. and it helps that we got Jack Conklin and Kareem Hunt back. So bring the fire, Kareem. Bring the fire. We we ready. We ready. Uh moving on <clears throat> to the Monday night football game, which is much more underwhelming. The Seahawks, who are terrible at the Washington. Football team. Ooh. Um, sheesh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on this one. Let's go to Adam first because I don't know. Oh, oh, wise guy, eh? I, I'm going with, with Washington. I, I do not believe in the Seahawks at all. Don't really believe in in Washington either, but. Some some big time wins the last last few weeks. I still cannot explain the the Buccaneers uh, win, but I mean, thank you because they made them look human for once. And I don't know, I don't know what happened last week, but again, I just like the Seahawks are are a they are falling off a cliff, and I don't know if this is Russ imposing his will to leave after this season. I don't know, but they got to make that that cross-country trip and i just again i there's nothing about them that says me that, that they're gonna just flip the switch and turn things around okay on that note i'm going seattle <laughs> Casey. okay it's, it's fine. i'm going uh with the only football team in the nfl i'm sure joe would too tragic, tragic. i blame you I blame you. I thought you were blaming Adam. No, he always blames me. I see it in, he always blames me. Yeah, right um, I'm anyway. Both of you. Both, both of them. I don't need a reason because I hate him. <laughs> um, As always, hope you guys enjoyed the picks 
Um, Ravens Brown preview coming at you very, very soon. Be sure to stay tuned for that or scroll down your page or whatever. Actually, scroll up your page because this video will technically be it. But you know what I mean. Anyway, um, be sure to check that out as well. We'll see you guys on the next one. Dippity dippity. No. Uh, also, hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. If this is the last video you see of us for a while, have a good Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. Enjoy, enjoy anything, whatever you can find to enjoy. Um, I say, I say, I say, enjoy it. Friends, camaraderie, the instant classic wrestling podcast. Me, listen to us no. while you're having some turkey. Yeah, thought that was going another direction. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh my god, get your mind Phil, out of the gutter, sir. Phil, I, I was thinking why he's in the toilet. Listen, listen to the instant anyway. classic wrestling podcast when you're buttering your biscuit. You know. I, would. I mean, there will be plenty of biscuits put in the oven. <laughs> I got a butt in the oven. I mean, I listen to our podcast every time I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing the the, the deed. Well, so, right hand so, hello. Hello. so anyway, we will see you guys on the next. <laughs> Until next time, because I don't know where this is going at this point. Really don't. Really don't. <laughs> Until next time.